Now, what would he do when an enslaver feels like the slave is trying to free himself from the clutches he has masterfully set? First, he'll use care tactics to reinstill fear in the slave's mind and heart. We'll create a doom and gloom scenario throughout, showcasing that if this action is not taken, things will be callous and rough for the slave. You have to talk with the international financial institutions, the international monetary agencies. You have to ask for a fresh financial assistance program. <laughs> We must go to the IMF, negotiate with the IMF that we have sufficient money for the next two years. IMF loan natua api making bear in the bag. Come on, we call pay it. Now, if that fails, then the enslaver will send his brigade of behind cases who will glorify the master and create a picture in the mind of the slave. How much they want the master? The master is the only solution and answer. Business plan na kanna tu na ayam ekat gihila vale kut na. Shani ka kriya marge apni na gavi ma vaham perasuda nam saakar chote elevela na gavi ma khalda na kya na baba pratibhu ka takya kar na kya na baba ta apni damma ma patanga na. Perhaps a strategic mistake um, to expect one country. Uh, to bail you out uh, and provide these kinds of regulatory tax concessions uh, that are not necessarily optimal for the economy uh, in the hope that they will result in a reciprocative assistance uh, which has not materialized for in sri lanka's case me avasthavi dunat e hera wena wenat vikalpayak ne lankawata mudal amatte varya sa bandagar lekam tuma sa maha banku adipati varya antarjatika mulya aramudulata but I can tell you we stand ready to discuss all options for uh, Sri Lanka. And when that's not working, the master will ramp up the pressure via his agents to sing that one song. Go to the IMF, go to the IMF, until you are broken and down in depths and starts to believe that it's the only way. Ladies and gentlemen, Sri Lanka is right now at that point. The current nationalistic government which came to power on the promise of securing Sri Lanka and its interests from Western investments have now opted to reverse its policies to cater to the current situation. So despite me trying to sound that the decision by the Finance Minister Basil Rajapaksa to proceed with IMF support despite many in the current government denying that they'll ever uh, reverse their economic stance or borrow from these types of financial agencies. A situation at hand owing to the COVID pandemic has dictated the term where it has cornered us to the point where there are no other options. At least that's how it looks like. As I tell you all the time, there are two sides to every story. Going to the IMF has its pros and cons too. So IMF will always come as a facilitator. They are really good in terms of fiscal reforms, uh, sometimes front-loaded. So some countries have got into some amount of stress because of agreeing on, on all these conditions. But if you look at the past 30 years ago, they used to give us a policy and you would implement. But from that to now, there's a good two-way conversation. So it's up to us to use our intellect and negotiate something good uh, for the country. But then I ask the simple question, OK. When the IMF came during the last regime, it was to fix our economy. It was to create economic growth. It was to fix our trade balance. What did we fix? We fixed the primary account in the budget, which is basically revenue minus expand mm -hmm. the uh, current expenditure. Mm -hmm. And Texas we said, look, up. look, you, you see, we balanced the budget. So what? <laughs> what did we get out of it? Did it make yeah. a difference to people? True. No. I think, you know, the, the, the way to look at this is we ha there's a lot of crap going on. The disarguments are being basically manipulated, manufactured to serve a particular agenda. Well, Sri Lanka is indeed in a crisis, a crisis that has been 73 years in the making. However, what matters is what are we doing right now to solve the problems? That's not creating a fresh set of issues for the near future.
Our action cannot be as such. We get out from one pit to fall for several more. Certain options will always seem like the only solution because our thinking is flawed as we are frustrated because of the crisis we are facing right now. People are angry because of the fuel queues. People are angry because of the gas queues. People are angry because of the power cuts. However, anger is a short-lived emotion. So if our action is based on that short-lived emotion to change that frown to a smile, then the resulting smile will be short-lived too, just like the solution. Today, mainstream media's prime time is dedicated to showcasing those cues, the one that is a clear result of global events. Sri Lankans didn't create COVID, it came from China. Sri Lankans didn't request to go to NATO to anger Russia, which resulted in regional unrest. Ukraine did, and that escalated to a global war. Sri Lankans didn't cut oil productions to jack up the prices. The oil cartels did, due to the conflict in Ukraine. Even though we didn't do any of that, we are going through its repercussions. That's what happens when you are part of the global community. However, Sri Lankans did mismanage the economy for 73 years. Sri Lankans did not do proper planning to meet an economic crisis at the onset of the pandemic. And Sri Lankans did not understand the fluctuating world market trends to prepare their people for the impending crisis. If the leaders of this country are taking long-term decisions based on the short-term anger of a selfish and self-centered idiot in a fuel queue who got a chance to utter some creative lines to a camera so that he can boast to his friends and family to watch the news because he's on it, if decisions are based on TikTok videos created by keyboard heroes who have no experience whatsoever about an economic crisis, no understands the basics of managing a household, or better yet, doesn't even know how to make their own bed after waking up in the morning, yet has the audacity to dictate how this country should be governed. And if decisions are made based on comments passed on by self-proclaimed economic pundits who haven't even lived enough to have experienced a real on-the-ground financial crisis that has hit this nation, and yet reads a book written by a foreigner who his or her economic teacher recommended and then comes on and screams on television or on social media or any platform for that matter, he or she can muster to get into and tell everybody that it's the only solution or if decisions are taken based on views expressed by think tanks who have special interests mainly because they're funded by international organizations who want them to sing the IMF song. And if decisions are made based on how or what is said on social media, then Sri Lanka has already lost the war. True leaders of the world were not made because they took popular decisions that are comfortable for all in the short term. True leaders were made because they saw a better world for their people and had the eye on the prize beyond the horizon and inspired the rest of his people to go there. We saw that leadership back in 2005 when an unknown fisheries minister told the nation that yes, we can win a war that was told unwinnable. That leadership was seen back in 1965 in the world when a country was told that they were going to suffer enormously after detaching from their mainland but later became one of the strongest economies in the world called Singapore. We've seen that leadership back in World War II, when the whole world was in the clutches of a ruthless dictator called Hitler. It didn't seem like there was a win on the other side. But a man named Churchill rallied the British people and the rest of the people in the world, and he led his country and the world from a brink of defeat to victory. We have to stand as one nation in a crisis and work together to get out of it. The government is not an institution sitting on a cloud. The government is us. We created it. So blaming the government is like blaming ourselves. Instead of playing the blame game, let's play the winning game. The game that lets Sri Lanka win. 
We'll be right back.